Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and you know those rebound stocks can be some of your best returns, looking for the stocks beaten but not broken, and then having the patience to hold on. That's how it's been for one of my best investments, seeing Generac Holdings crushed to become the worst stock in the S&P 500 through 2022. I bought 200 shares January 2023 at $111 each, selling some calls against it for downside protection. I've since bought more shares and sold more calls over the last two years, and I'm up over $30,000 with the stock back up to $140 a share and more upside on a remaining position of 300 shares. But those falling stocks can also be some of your riskiest investments and a nightmare if you own the shares through that plunge. When that happens, it is critical that you revisit your research to see where you went wrong and what could still go right. Finding those battered stocks with a strong outlook though and picking up more shares can amplify your returns. So for this video, I want to highlight three stocks that have been beaten but still have that upside potential. The rebound stocks I'm watching right now. To help you with the research, I'll be using Seeking Alpha's Alpha Picks, diving into the bull and the bear analysis on each stock. Alpha Picks gives you two data-driven stock picks each month with an in-depth analysis on each and has produced a 114% return since launch in 2022 more than three times the return on the S&P 500. The quant team analyzes stocks with strong long-term potential and sustainable growth through analysis of that growth, valuation, momentum, and profitability. They follow that quantitative analysis up with in-depth research into each stock to uncover what the market has missed. And right now, Alphapix is offering a $50 discount with the coupon code I'll leave in the description below, so check that out. Super Microcomputer, ticker SMCI, is probably the most talked about beaten stock, down 64% from its frenzied March peak. Now first, you gotta understand, the shares never should have been up that high anyway, but this is a company expected to post 89% revenue growth and 54% profit growth this year, is trading for very interesting valuations, so it's time to reassess before it heads higher. SMCI has been one of Alphapix's star performers, and even after the recent sell-off, is still up nearly 400% since adding it in November 2022. The company makes server and storage solutions, so the hardware for those data centers and that booming growth in AI. SMCI builds its servers using NVIDIA chips to power those data centers that can do more of that high-level computing by artificial intelligence. With reports earlier this year that the company has received a major order for NVIDIA Blackwell-focused server racks. So it is in the strongest theme of the year, that AI and data center hardware growth. And while others in the space have come down since the July highs, nothing like the crush on the shares of SMCI. And much of that is on a short seller's report, Hindenburg Research, accusing the company of a list of issues. Hindenburg claims that most of its sales staff fired in the 2020 fraud case have been rehired back, along with accounting practices that inflate growth and a weakening margin trend. SMCI hasn't addressed the sales staff issue, which I'm not as concerned about anyway. With the kind of growth the company has seen, it needs an experienced sales program and it's going to hire the best. As for that weakening margin trend, we've known about this with the gross margin under pressure in each of the last four quarters on product mix, while operating expenses are up 38% over the year on more investments in R&D. The company did delay its annual 10K report on August 30th to investigate this, but filed its quarterly report on September 3rd. When it all comes down to it, none of the accusations are life-threatening for the company and, even if true, don't detract from its leadership in that growth industry. SMCI has a long history of growth, but also a long history of these kinds of problems, surging 405% in the three years to 2015, only to crash 65% over the next three years, then to rebound for 80 times your money in those five years to last March. It is the ultimate rebound stock. Management forecasts full year revenue with a midpoint of $28 billion, right in line with analyst estimates, and a high as $30 billion. That is 90% revenue growth at the midpoint and with a double digit growth for years to come. It's also forecasting $44 in per share earnings, which puts the stock at just 10 times on a price to earnings basis. So what I'm thinking here is even in a worst case scenario where sales and earnings had to be revised following an internal investigation, this is still going to be a very cheap stock for a company that is a proven leader in data center hardware. It may take a while for investor trust to return, but I think we'll ultimately see some of that same triple digit returns we've seen in the past. We've still got two more rebound stocks to watch, one with a potential 45% upside to analyst targets, but now it's your turn. Which stocks are you following in this kind of rebound theme? Let me know in the comments below which stocks you're buying that have been battered but can get back up. Okta Inc, ticker OKTA, is in one of my favorite growth themes and booking solid growth, but the shares have plunged 36% from the March peak. Now, part of this is just the turn in investor sentiment for cybersecurity companies. We see the entire industry has suffered since the highs earlier this year, mostly on the recent earnings that, while they beat expectations for strong growth, 
were just not enough to please the market. Okta hasn't fallen as bad as Zscaler or outage rocked CrowdStrike, but has underperformed these others here and could be a great pickup performer. Okta bills itself as the world's identity company, verifying and securing users online along with that threat detection and response. And if you've done pretty much anything online lately, you know that every site wants to authenticate your identity. Alphapix showed analysis in February to estimate the identity access management market as high as $34 billion by 2028, of which Okta would only need a fraction to continue growing its revenue. The growth isn't as strong here as we see in some of the other cybersecurity players, but it is consistent around 16% a year, and this is subscription, recurring revenue the company can count on. Analysts are forecasting just 13% in full-year revenue growth, but for the company to rocket its earnings by 63% to $2.61 a share. Now that brings the shares to about 28 times on a PE basis and under 5 times revenue. That's not super cheap, but well under where it's traded in the past. And I think investor sentiment has just taken this one down too far, and analyst targets are for $107 a share, a 45% upside over the next year alone. Whether it gets there or not, this is one to watch for even longer term potential. This last stock is one of my favorites in the theme, but these aren't the only stocks I'm watching for those double or even triple digit returns. Check out this video next to see the 10 largest holdings in my portfolio. I've invested more than half a million dollars in these, my 10x growth stock, so make sure you catch that video next. Next up is GigaCloud Technology, ticker GCT, which was rocked by a short seller report earlier this year but could have a surprise upside. The stock is down 60% from the March high, but could have short squeeze potential when the short seller accusations prove unfounded. That's because nearly 30% of the shares available are borrowed and sold short. That means short sellers will eventually need to buy them back in the market to return those borrowed positions. The fact that insiders hold 13% and long-term institutional investors another 38% means that if the shorts unwind here quickly, it could spike the shares. The company offers a storage and fulfillment services for retailers and e-commerce, helping to lower costs through shorter delivery times and fewer touch points on the product. It's similar to what Amazon does with its FBA program on its site, but GigaCloud offers it for the 60% of e-commerce sales that aren't on Amazon. So I see GigaCloud very much like my Shopify investment, where Shop dominates that market for merchant e-commerce off Amazon, GigaCloud has the potential to dominate that logistics for sellers off Amazon. And growth here has been very strong, with revenue growth of 33% over the three years from 2020, and active sellers up 43% from last year. That increase in sellers has resulted in a 71% increase in gross merchandise volume, or GMV, over the year, a key metric for any e-commerce platform. Analysts expect revenue higher by 58% this year, and 21% next to $1.3 billion, and earnings per share jump 53% over the two-year period. That puts the shares at just five times on a forward PE basis and 0.7 times this year's revenue. This is a rare growth stock that's already net income and cash flow positive, reporting free cash flow of $114 million in the last year. So at that price and that growth, the share should be a steal, but there's that critical word, reported. Short seller Grizzly Research accused the company of inflating its growth through related shell companies posing as buyers and sellers, basically self-dealing to show that higher seller and GMV counts. Grizzly also claims that the web traffic on the Giga B2B website doesn't support its claims and proves low actual activity. To research those accusations, the Alphapix team sent an analyst to the Giga Cloud warehouse in New Jersey to verify that inventory and activities. Photos showed a full warehouse and solid utilization and shipping operations. The research also found that Grizzly misled in its report, citing only organic web traffic rather than total traffic through the GigaCloud marketplace, which was 130,000 visits in April alone. Since GigaCloud isn't a consumer direct business, you wouldn't expect much organic traffic. Instead, it should come from those seller sites. And as for the undisclosed related party transactions, an interview with CEO Wu found that these were variable interest entities set up years before when the company had a different business model and are no longer in use. Now, the fact that the shares have remained under pressure shows the market is still worried about those allegations, but that boots on the ground research helps to dispel some of it. On that kind of growth the company is reporting, shares should be worth two or three times sales, which would put them back around $45 peak or higher. There is still a lot of risk here, but that upside is worth a small position. Get your $50 off Alpha Picks with a special coupon code in the description below and see more of the in-depth research I used in this video, or click on the video to the right to see the 10 largest holdings in my portfolio. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.